Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Tuesday, October 4th, 2016. And holy hell, guys, so much VR to talk about. So much went down today in terms of virtual reality. Let's jump right into it. Game wise, let's talk about Gunjack. So, Gunjack is a game in the Eve universe, which is Eve Online, Eve Valkyrie, and of course, Gunjack itself. Gunjack is a game that is playable currently on the Gear VR. Now, at Google's press conference today, which we're going to talk quite a bit about in today's episode, they announced that the game, due out in November, is going to be an exclusive title for them. So, yep, six months to a year, probably it will be exclusive on the Daydream only. Now, it was a game for me that felt very much like a mobile game. And what I mean by that is Eve Valkyrie felt like a PC game, whereas texture-wise, speed-wise, you could definitely tell that Gunjack was a mobile version of that, considerably scaled down. Still fun, but uh, definitely no Valkyrie, and in my opinion, definitely no uh, EVE Online or Elite Dangerous. Now, a question that I get asked a lot, and there's a variation of the question that I get asked almost as much, is Epics, when are we going to start seeing AAA titles? And the variation being Epics, when are we going to start seeing sexy games, like good looking games? And my answer is usually the same. Look, these games require more effort, right? There's more involved, larger teams sometimes, uh, you know, more intense uh, asset manipulation, etc. And just Creating longer games takes more time. My thought has always been that, look, by the end of the summer, that period of time between the end of the summer and the end of the holidays is when we are really going to start seeing stuff happen in VR. We're going to start seeing AAA titles trickle in and, you know, good-looking ones. Now, I got to say, I'm always gameplay over graphics. A game can have the absolute crap is graphics if it's still fun as hell to play i'll play it whereas a very good looking game that has crappy gameplay i'm not going to bother getting into uh i might look at it as a tech demo but that's it so for me it's always about gameplay that's not to say i don't appreciate good graphics because hell yeah i do appreciate me some good graphics and well, we'll get into that with these three upcoming games, which are an example of, you know, what I've been saying for a while on what we can expect to see. The first title is called Alice, and it's an adaptation of, obviously, Alice in Wonderland. It sounds a little bit on the surface like the Solace Project, in that you had to make an emergency landing. Solace, you were crash-landed, right? In this, you've got to find fuel. But I think that's kind of where the similarities end. The rest of it is and Alice is coming out October 27th I'm not talking about a game next year or two months from now or right at the end of the holiday season October 27th that's literally three weeks away but man does it look good lots of varied terrain if the gameplay can come even close to the graphics we are in for a treat so that's Alice and it will be both Rift and Vive next up we have Primordian now this is a very good-looking, tribal FPS, so first-person shooter game. And I really like the concept of this. So the concept is you're on a planet that has a dark side and a half side, or a light side that doesn't change. Now, not to get all astronomy on people who aren't interested in that, but the point is you have that happen when a world or a planet is tidally locked to its star, meaning one side always appears to be facing because throughout the course of just one orbital rotation, it spins one time around completely, right? Just like our moon. Same idea. Only on a planet around a star, it's going to mean one side is dark, one side is light. Now, the concept in the game is that every 2,000 years, there's eclipses that put shadows on the light side that allow the cr uh, critters from the dark side to traverse over to the light so definitely very cool premise and man does it look good i mentioned that about five times already guys but really these these are lookers these games like 
One of the better looking games I've seen to date would be The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is an Unreal 4 engine game. But these look considerably better than that. And we all know that stuff looks even better in VR than it does on a screen or a video. So, wow, I'm excited. Super, super excited. Check out the videos of these games, by the way, guys, if you have time, just to get an idea of the gameplay and what you're up against. Now, this next one, if you're watching, Tom, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, looks like it's a wave-based game. It's called VR Invaders. It's also an Unreal 4 engine game. Also looks very good. Um, but, yeah, it's from my.com. All three of these and we don't have confirmed dates for the other two, but certainly for Alice, which is October 27th. The other ones are estimated to be between October and December. So, yeah, this last one, my.com uh, game called VR Invaders, which kind of just brings the old school into the new VR. Looks great. All right, on to the news. So, Google press conference. Let's talk about that for a bit. Google basically confirmed what we've talked about here uh, on the channel between ourselves. Uh, it turns out we were right on a lot of things uh, and, and a couple question marks remain. So let's talk about the things confirmed. The first one is the price. So $79 US is in fact the price for the Daydream. And I'm just going to give you the price for some other countries. These are mostly English speaking ones. They were published uh didn't get any euro prices at the time of my research and you know recording this right now but 69 pounds uk for it 99 canadian 119 australian 110 new zealand so there you go all the english speaking countries and the prices that they can expect for the daydream of course if you've pre-ordered a pixel phone there's a free daydream promotion that you're probably part of which i believe was just in the us only but i could be wrong it may have extended to other countries as well now definitely some design aspects i like there's a couple of things i wasn't a huge fan of uh the light pastel -y colors not a huge fan of that they i don't know what it is about them it i honestly i can't put my thumb on it other than that i don't like it and it'll probably come to me what it is I don't like. But on the surface, I just don't like the color tones. Now, functionality-wise, very cool stuff. For example, on the Gear VR here, you can basically control the length of the phone based on the adapters. But the width, you've just got to use what it's compatible with because the panel, well, on this one, the panel doesn't adhere at all to it. Uh, but it means that it doesn't look flush when you've got certain phones in here. With the Daydream, there's actual hinges here and here, so the faceplate actually comes out to accommodate wider phones. In the don't like so much category, as well as with the colors, is they've got a little string here, and it's the string and a knob that you tie the string around that actually holds the faceplate in place. So that looked a little, little cheap. Um, I'd probably get used to it but definitely doesn't look uh, as modern as the rest of the unit. Now, the lenses are also not adjustable, so like with this unit, that's something to, uh, to take into consideration. And uh, the type of phone, right? Obviously, right now, looks like it's the Pixel. We're going to talk about the Pixel in a second, but um, November is the expected release date for the Daydream for the public. So let's talk about the Pixel phones for a bit. Now, a lot of people have been saying that they are iPhone killers, right? I don't think they are. I definitely think they jumped on board the Apple fan design wagon, right? It, it definitely looks Apple inspired. But hardware wise, I think Apple's okay. And I say that, believe me, as completely neutral. I've had an iPhone, but all my other phones have been pretty much Android phones. Tablet, same. I've got iPad and Android. Now, let's compare the processor. You've got the Snapdragon 821 on the Daydream, A10 on, oh, sorry, on the Pixel, A10 on the iPhone. Well, iPhone on most benchmarks is about 30% faster. Even though the CPUs, the quad core on each looks about the same, slightly smaller fabrication process on the Daydream, 14 nanometers, for the uh, processor 16 on the apple side of things 
the rest of it very very similar so yeah the apple actually edges it like i said about 33 percent also yeah very light same with the daydream like the device i, I believe it's about 300 grams for the uh, daydream which puts it about half of uh almost half of rift certainly half of vive so very very light next up google again yeah open sourcing tilt brush toolkit for devs now the tilt brush toolkit is a set of scripts to allow people to convert the tilt objects that they paint in vr it's going to be available these scripts on github free so that was an awesome move if they want to maintain and increase the momentum that tilt brush already has that's the way to do it good smart move uh, on google's part and uh, if you're watching this video, Craig, you and people who are more into graphics, substantially more than I am, maybe you guys can tell me, is it going to matter much from a development point of view or are, you know, job specific tools or VR specific tools always going to be more appealing? That I don't know the answer to. Uh, if you guys do or anybody who works in the graphics industry, let me know in the comments below what this means, if anything. All right, taking place next week are the Steam Dev Days. Now, these are going to be at the Bellevue headquarters, apparently. Uh, two days, October 12th and 13th. I'm going to have the link below. Describes kind of the agenda, just kind of a, a little summary of what to expect. Tim Sweeney, who's CEO of Epic, he's going to be there. He's going to be talking about some subjects like uh, social interaction in VR, uh, digital humans, and user-created content i'm hoping fingers crossed that he surprises us all in the last 30 seconds announces some kind of vr game that would be awesome uh even if it isn't likely i wouldn't put it past him and i hope that's the case now we've talked about both sketchfab and matterport uh, on this channel matterport just the other day mentioned that they had 300,000 or just over 300,000 assets in their uh, you know, cloud storage for people to peruse through. Well, we get word from Sketchfab, not to be uh, out e peened, that they have a million. <laughs> so, between the two, what that actually means for VR devs, I don't know. I don't know how useful those types of assets are. We'll have to wait and see. And if there's any devs watching, let me know. I'm curious uh, to find out what what the scoop is with that all right guys that's it for today's news as always cheers and definitely catch you on the vr flip side